Well, I specifically teach a course on advertising history, so AdViews is tremendous. It's consistent content, it's good content, it's visible content. AdViews is a tremendous asset to me in the classroom. Madison Avenue and the Color Line, which is my first book, it's an exciting story, it's an interesting story of the struggle of African Americans to craft a place for themselves in the advertising industry. The effort historically had been looked at as something that was a 1950s or 1960s phenomenon, and what my research shows is that it's, it was an effort that went on much longer than that, as far back as the 1920s. So I was educated on the traditional literature that said uh, there really weren't any African Americans in the industry, African Americans weren't interested in joining the industry until the 1950s, or some went as far as to say it wasn't something until we got to the 1960s. African Americans have always been present in advertisements from the very beginning, but it was in negative and stereotypical ways, picturing them as subservient, picturing them as scared of ghosts, picturing them about to be eaten by chickens or alligators. So they've always been present in some form. But in terms of changing from those kind of negative or stereotypical or derogatory kinds of images, that's something that took struggle. That's something that we have to attach to, again, the 1960s and into the early 1970s period as African American civil rights organizations, as well as individual African Americans in the advertising business themselves, started to push for a shift in how blacks were shown in advertisements. In my book, I talk about uh, the golden age of African Americans in the advertising industry, and that's a period from the late 1960s into the early 1970s. And that's when we got some of the most impactful training programs and recruitment programs by mainstream agencies to interest African American students and college graduates on the advertising industry business, uh, training and preparing African Americans to be various professionals in and within advertising agencies, as well as we started to get significant numbers of African Americans founding or creating uh, what would become major black-owned advertising agencies in that period. And well, one of the biggest differences that I see in advertising today is an increase in diversity. Today we have advertisements that speak to the heterogeneity of this country, that include a variety of different peoples in a variety of different roles. They include women in vastly different roles than the traditional 1950s uh, homemaker. Advertising is with us from the very moment we awake to the moment that to the moment that we go to sleep, and it's with us from the very beginning of our lives as well. So we can look back at advertisements in the 1960s and understand something of society. We can understand who was important, who was not important, who was in power, who, who wasn't in power. What were the very aspirations that people had in the society? What, what were some of their hopes? What were some of their goals? What were some of their dreams? How did they spend their time? Advertisements, their very ubiquity, helps us understand those things. And so without preserving those, without preserving advertisements, that information is lost. And therefore our understanding of the past is limited.